receive the product on time, when they taste that first spoonful of perfectly frozen ice cream, they have this aha moment. Oh my God, alcohol ice cream. We rely on UPS Capital for that customer experience. I'm Jen Randall Collins, and I am the CEO and co-founder of Proof Alcohol Ice Cream. Proof is a old family recipe. It's got top shelf bourbon, moonshine, and rum in it. We have a tequila line also coming out. We do not use imitation or food coloring. We try to keep it as natural as we can. The most important part of our business is the end user and the customer experience. Our bar is exceptionally high, so Proof is constantly racing the clock to get the ice cream to the customer on time and perfectly frozen. All ice cream melts, so it was incredibly important to us to find an insurance policy that covered perishable goods in cases of delay. We have a world-class product, and we need a world-class insurance partner. Partnering with UPS Capital was an absolute no-brainer for us. On occasion, if a shipment arrived late or melted, they make it right with coverage that reimburses us for invoice value of the goods and expediting a replacement shipment to the customer. InsureShield by UPS Capital gives us peace of mind as we scale across the country. It doesn't matter if we're shipping to New York in the winter or Arizona in the heat of the summer. We rely on UPS Capital and SureShield for the product to arrive perfectly frozen and on time. We always say the proof is in the taste. In this case, the proof is in the partnership with UPS Capital. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ayana Green, and I'm Vice President of SME Strategy and Revenue Channels at UPS. I am so excited for our webinar today, and it is a continuation of a series of success stories from our small and medium-sized business customers. Today, we will learn how the CEO and co-founder of Proof Alcohol Ice Cream works with UPS to ensure timely delivery of her perishable product compliance with regulations and proper packaging, while UPS Capital Insurance also adds peace of mind. Before I introduce my guests, I'd like to mention a couple of things. Proof Alcohol Ice Cream is offering us a promo code exclusive to the listeners of this webinar. $10 off your next online order between July 28th and July 30th. Use promo code UPS. This code is again good through July 30th, 2022, and some exclusions do apply. There's also a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Please feel free to submit your questions throughout the webinar, and we will answer as many as we can at the end. Our virtual consultation service is another way for you to engage with our team here. If the webinar sparks any ideas or questions on how you grow your business, you can schedule time to chat with a UPS consultant completely for free. It is a shipping related question or e-commerce related question. Our consultants are full of ideas to help make your clients love you even more. Just click on the Let's Chat panel to the right of your screen and reserve your consultation. Lastly, we do record our webinars and we will send a link for you to watch it again or share it with your colleagues. You can find this webinar and all of our previous webinars at www.ups.com backslash webinars. Please do check them out now for today. All right, I'm pleased to introduce our audience to co-founder and CEO of Proof Alcohol Ice Cream, Jennifer Randall Collins, Kentucky native and graduate of the University of South Carolina, where she played women's basketball. Jim and work, Jen worked in political consulting before pursuing her dream of uniting two of life's greatest pleasures, you guessed it, alcohol and ice cream. In 2015, she launched JB Proof's with a small group of partners and investors. Three years later, she joined forces with an entrepreneur, engineer, and educator, Dirk Brown, and the dynamic duo bought out the original partners and rebranded the company as Proof. Determined to take product innovation to the highest level, Jen collaborated with food scientists to modify the recipe, improve production techniques, and create what has become an award-winning consumer packaged goods category leader. As founder and CEO, Jen oversees the company's vision for growth and leads production, distribution, and a not so easy regulatory environment. 
Welcome, Jen. Thank you, Ayana. Next. It's a pleasure. Pleasure to be here. Excellent. Thank you, Jen. Next, I'd like to introduce Quinto Marini, a UPS package engineer manager. In his three decades with UPS, thank you, Quinto, 30 years, Quint has developed packaging solutions for a wide variety of customers globally. Quint oversees the UPS package design and test lab in Addison, Illinois, and the team of packaging engineers who help customers optimize and protect their goods, reduce waste through viable shipping solutions. Quint was co-developer of the UPS Echo Responsible Packaging Program and is co-founder of five packaging design patents. Quite impressive. All right, so let's get started. Our goal here today, as usual, is hosting SMB webinars, is to make clear the many way UPS brings solutions forward that can help SMB scale and grow. But more importantly, to develop a forum for successful e-commerce professionals like Jen to share her experiences to help other SMBs, all of you joining us today. Jen, first question for you. There's so much to discuss. I just love your story. So clever, so successful. I have to ask what everyone wants to know. How did you even come up with this ingenious idea, mixing alcohol and ice cream? And talk us through the process. How long did it take to even develop your first batch? Absolutely, Ayana, and thank you for the opportunity to speak to your group. Um, so I'm originally from the state of Kentucky. In Kentucky, we're really known for three things, uh, basketball, horses, and of course, bourbon. So mm. you can go back many generations to multiple families in the state of Kentucky that would add bourbon to marinades, bread pudding, desserts, and it would be an actual ingredient in uh, the offering, you know, particularly around the holidays. So I had this opportunity to bring uh, bourbon as a first iteration into an old family ice cream recipe turn it into our own, work with some food scientists to develop some intellectual property around that recipe and uh, a portfolio of trade secrets that uh, allowed us to get to the market in a manner that um, we're currently scaling, uh, not just in the Carolinas, but in Florida and California mm -hmm. and states in between. Well, so I can only imagine how difficult it is for any small business founder to break into and really disrupt two large industries, food and alcohol. And you've done so as a female founder in these male dominated industries, which is so impressive. What motivates you to take on this challenge and what experience have you learned along the way? So, Ayana, that's a great question, and one I'm glad that you're asking, because my entire story around this product actually starts with the word no. I mm. had the leading alcohol attorney in the United States and uh, the MSNBC, all the business shows uh, that, that we see in the evenings. Um, and I had an opportunity to speak with him about my idea in uh, December of 2014. And, you know, 30 seconds into the conversation, he was very polite, very nice. And I won't use his name, um, but he said, honey, you'll never get this off the ground because you can't get through the regulatory hurdles at the federal level and then go state by state to get this product to market. So mm -hmm. as you can imagine, that put a, a fire in my soul to be told no, that I can't do something, um, which just made me double down on my efforts and work, surround myself with a phenomenal team. And uh, lo and behold, you know, eight years later, here we are today, uh, with product, not just at the shelf, but product, um, you know, in Florida, going across the country. And even we even have international shipments as well. So thank yeah. goodness I didn't take no for an answer and just dug in my heels and uh, continue to humbly disrupt two, two very massive industries on the dairy side and the, and the alcohol side. Yeah, listen, we're happy you didn't take no for an answer either. Like your your <laughs> product is delicious. And I'm glad you're getting Thank even you. wider distribution for more people to try it. Absolutely. Quinn you, Quinn, you represent our customer solutions business function. First, please tell us more about customer solutions. What does customer solutions do? Sure, Ayana. Thank you for having me. Uh, UPS Customer Solutions is a consulting arm of UPS. And we help our clients drive innovation across all areas of the supply chain, from supply chain optimization to warehouse design and automation, 
customize IT solutions, and of course, uh, packaging design. Our goal is to help our clients run more efficiently while scaling for growth. We're always looking for that growth. When would you say is the right time for an SMB to engage with customer solutions? And is there a cost? And how do you justify that cost to SMBs that are so cash strapped, especially early in their, uh, their journey? Sure. Uh, business owners have a great instinct for their business needs. <laughs> We're just hearing a great story from Jennifer. And when there is a process that needs improvement or an opportunity for growth that's waiting to be explored, that's the perfect time to reach out to your UPS account executive and engage our folks. Uh, we work together to map out the opportunities and help you reimagine the possibilities with the entire UPS experts, as I noted earlier, to help you succeed. In regards to the fee base, it is a fee based service. However, we don't want to make recommendations unless we can offer that significant ROI. We're really considering ourselves as an extension of your client team. And our goal is always to help our customers become more profitable while driving a more sustainable supply chain. Uh, we won't propose recommendations unless we can't meet those goals. No, that's great to hear, Clint. You know, and I got to ask one more question. Uh, sure. What are these five patents? It's not easy to get a patent. You have five, tell me, tell me more. Yeah, they, they revolved around, of course, you know, creative solutions that are based on customer needs. Uh, the couple of them, uh, the garment box and the eco-responsible packaging program. So for the garment box, mm -hmm. it's always been an issue with the garment industry where, you know, when they're shipping through the environment, uh, you know, getting wrinkles out or uh, product arriving with wrinkles and the oversized packaging. So uh, our goal was to um, optimize the size and reduce that um, the problem of wrinkling. Uh, so we were able to create a whole package doing that. And also uh, by optimizing the packaging and the product, we're able to reduce that dimensional factor. So it was, it was a big success. Uh, the eco-responsible packaging program, everyone's you know hearing it in the news about uh, companies and their sustainable goals. You know, 2025 is the big uh, is the big number that I'm hearing about people trying to get plastics out of out of their packaging. Mm -hmm. Well, that's how we created the eco responsible packaging program. It's based on three initiatives. One is damage. You can't have damage. If you have damage, you're doubling your your mm -hmm. carbon output. Optimization. Uh, you want to optimize your pack package versus your product, and then your materials analysis. So you want to make sure that, you know, there's eight indices in materials analysis, and you want to be able to manage those. So uh, those are, the the patents were revolved around the two, but, uh, and there's processes and calculators developed to help substantiate that program. You know, this is fascinating because it just is a reminder how as an entrepreneur, packaging might be one of the last things you're thinking about, but how important it is. And, you know, Jen, thinking about it, it's crucial for what you do. And it's obvious from the video that you completely understand the importance of packaging, especially considering it's a perishable product. Talk to me how you landed on packaging you use today. What's included to keep your ice cream frozen? How many iterations did you even have to go through before landing on where you are? That, that, that's a great question. And it, 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 it is utterly important to us because we're creating um, essentially a brand new market category, market category that's never been at shelf or in e-commerce. So mm -hmm. with our packaging, we lead with what I would call our corporate responsibility. So we go the opposite of what you see in the ice cream aisles or our ice cream packaging for colors. We went with this stark red that really gets your attention so that you get education around. When you look at red packaging as we grow, you'll, you'll see that's proof and that has alcohol in that. That's different than what you see in traditional ice cream. Um, and then obviously the iterations on that, really getting to the color through thousands of color wheels, you know, working with our, our rock star CMO, Kim Bowman. Um, and she really gravitated towards my vision 
and my partner's mm -hmm. vision on what we were looking for and just spent, you know, hundreds of hours of really defining what we wanted to show to the customer um, first and then developing the properties around that to best mm -hmm. keep, keep the product frozen. So we utilized, um, we have tr tremendous partnerships with, the, with, with vendors that provide mm -hmm. our packaging for us. Um, and then obviously on the e-com side, how important it is utilizing through our relationship with UPS is how we're shipping that and getting it to the consumer. And that, you know, goes into everything to do with time, shipping, getting there on time, all the things that we talk about as a group, um, because the most important experience is the end consumer. So the packaging was actually very crucial and we're working on our own uh, patents around some of the coloring quint as it relates to the ice cream sector and a bit what UPS did with the color brown um, and getting some, some trademarks and patents around that. So probably over answered your question, but um, just to give you a little background and color on how we were thinking of that. Yeah, you did not over answer. I think our audience is thirsty to understand everything that you, you've done to lead to such success. So that's, that's perfect information. Thank you, Jen. You know, Thank Quint, you. Obviously, Jen has done an amazing job developing a packaging solution that works for a product. I know many SMB founders have had to figure this out on their own. So please talk to me about how UPS solutions can assist companies who need to help packaging in general, but also especially for perishable or breakable products. I know that's a special category and you do not want your customer to be disappointed when the product arrives. Yeah, well, UPS has a lot of resources on UPS.com, such as the Packaging Advisor. And what that does, it, it gives you like a fundamental base of, of packaging and, and, and how things should be packed. Examples are, uh, you know, what strength of box do you need? Uh, mm. What type of interior cushioning or void fill should you use? And keeping fragile items separate from one another by keeping them in the center more than on the corners. Uh, or else even more importantly, and this happens a lot, is the taping method. What kind of taping mm. method are you using? Uh, as for perishables, I mean, I, I saw Jennifer's packaging. Uh, you know, there's two important points in shipping perishables. One extremely important is the insulation material. Mm. You wanna be able to have something that's dense and won't allow the, the hot or the cold during the yeah. winter time to penetrate that, that product. Um, it's important to keep it out. And you have to make sure that your, your insulation is dense and it's thick. Uh, the second is the coolant, the type of coolant used. Mm -hmm. And Jennifer is using the dry ice um, and that's, that's a great method of using to keep things frozen. Um, the other methodology for like refrigerated products mm -hmm. is more gel packs. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. customers use a combination of, of the, of the um, uh, dry ice and the gel packs to keep, to keep the gel packs cold. So uh, those are some, um, at least some resources to use and to think about. Now, you're, you're sparking all these ideas because obviously I'm a consumer of products as well. And now I'm thinking about, yeah, every, those packages do come with some uh, freezer inserts, et cetera. So it's just something that every SMB has to think about. As much as the quality of your product is, it's delivered in the form that you intended, especially if you're, you're uh, transporting this cross country. Um, and I know, sure. Jen, speaking about the importance of CX, right, customer experience, I know you decided to work very closely with UPS Capital to build another layer of protection for your business and customers. You know, talk to us a little bit about that relationship and how that's given you additional peace of mind since it's so critical that your product arrives in perfect condition. Absolutely. So UPS, and this, I, I was introduced to this opportunity through UPS Capital and Connor Donovan, who has been a godsend for me and for our company. Mm. And it all starts with relationships. I, you know, we all have many choices on who we're going to utilize for our third party shipping. If we're not going to do the shipping ourselves, who are we going to utilize? Mm -hmm. And it all started at the relationship level. And it was really because of Connor and the UPS capital team, Keith Cox, that I really became drawn in and said, 
I went to my team and I said, this is the way to go. Not because you're just, you guys are good at getting products there on time, but because of the relationship, the working relationship and the ability to work closely together to solve problems mm -hmm. together. So that, that was the first thing. And then the, the second big thing, I know we're all focused on e-commerce, but through UPS Capital and the insurance piece of it, that's really important to me is not just the e-commerce piece, but the fact that we're shipping truckloads to Walmarts, Lowe's Foods, um, end user retailers that we have protection through UPS Capital on third parties that also move our product from our manufacturing manufacturing facility to the shelf um, for the retailers, and that's a very important piece of what we do. In in addition to the e-commerce, so that peace of mind for me um, is is pretty high when it comes to to not just UPS e-com, but also UPS Capital on the back end. You know, Jennifer, you say something, and it sparks something for me that there's B two C and B two B. And so obviously right. you want your end consumer to be happy when someone like me receives your package. But when you have yes. a customer like Walmart, they need to get their package cold and ready to be on shelf. And there's some real implications if it comes damaged. Talk about what the implications are if your, your ice cream comes melted. Like what, what's the impact to you? Well, the, the implications for us are, could, could be catastrophic. So we could lose, if we lose an entire truckload of frozen product, you're looking at hundreds of thousands of dollars in loss mm -hmm. on, on our end. And above and beyond that, and probably more importantly, a really irritated customer that's really important to what we do. Now, we have more retailers in Walmart. They happen to be the biggest retailer in the world, but um, we ha have so many instances where we're shipping to our different partners around the country um, and it's vitally important that the product does not go through thermal cycling, if you will, mm. that it's going up and down. So we need, you know, continued frozen capacity. And anytime that, that goes a little bit off the rails, which it happens on occasion, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. that's when we utilize our partner with UPS Capital to work with us to, to recover some of the damages that, that have occurred in that shipment. That's good. And, and, and I'm just curious, Jen, at what point did you decide, I need this peace of mind? Because it gets to a point where you're, 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 you're slowly but surely building your momentum, and then you decide, I need to spend a little bit extra money to deliver this because the risk is too high. When, when was that tipping point for you? You know, it, it, was, it, it was pretty early in the process. Um, now, with that being said, until I really started interacting with you guys at UPS, I didn't understand the suite of suites of opportunity that you guys offer on that side as it relates to protection. Um, but it happened pretty early in, in on the process, just because when you have a new product and a new market category, you just don't want to let down your retail partners or the end consumer, because mm -hmm. the worst thing that can happen is an end consumer gets a pint that has been melted and refrozen. Mm. And just a little bit of a grainy taste, which happens with all ice cream. Traditional ice cream, it's thermal cycling. It kills the product. Um, so, so having that, that we we brought that on pretty early in the process, and I think we're going on maybe two and a half, three years with UPS Capital on these solutions on the back end. Got it. Thank you. Another question for you. We have some other founders listening who either ship, ship food or alcohol, and many of them struggle with understanding and adhering to the multiple state and federal regulations in these industries. Something that person that told you, you're never going to get this figured out. Um, tell us how you did get it figured out and how you could help some other SMBs listening um, and if UPS even played a role in that process. Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, so when I started this process in 14 and after I'd talked to the attorney that told me no, um, I, I started to do my own due diligence as it relates to uh, food and alcohol. And there's not a lot of information available because it's simply never been done on a scale that would warrant true regulation around a product like ours that actually has you know, above 2% alcohol by volume. So for instance, I know haagen and it's phenomenal. They do a spirit line where you're utilizing, you know, flavor agents 
but they're not getting above 5% ABV. So they mm-hmm. don't have to fall under any of the regulatory mm-hmm. rules, whereas we are actually getting that 7% ABV. So I, as I started to do this research, there were actually two states that had um, regulations on the book that would fit a product similar to ours. One was New York State um, that fell at a, a capped it at a 5% ABV. And then South Carolina, um, which I was so glad to see, actually had some regulations on the book that allowed the combination of food and alcohol at, at any ABV. So started utilizing my connections here in the state of South Carolina um, from when I played basketball and uh, talked with the folks at Department of Agriculture, DOR, and they were absolutely phenomenal to us, our Department of Commerce, and they directed me in the ma- manner to, to go get the appropriate licensing and start up the innovation here in South Carolina. So to other entrepreneurs, I'd say start out with your local um, state ABC boards. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're looking to get into the alcohol business to understand a bit more about how you maneuver the space. You can get in legal trouble if you do not do this correctly. Got it. And, and you broke up for a little bit there, Jennifer, at the end, but one one thing, and I think if I'm understanding you correctly, is for some of these uh, states, they don't have regulations, but you kind of led the way because of the need of your business, but they were almost collaborating with you and not standing in your way, but kind of enabling your path to kind of get your product to market. Absolutely. Before we go into a new state, we I always, I personally talk to the state ABC, mm-hmm. alcohol beverage control folks, to talk about our product. And nine times out of 10, most states don't know what to do with us because they've never had a product like ours. So we work closely with the states to understand how they want us to roll out this product in their retailers around their state. And everybody's been incredibly helpful. You know, it's people I have found generally when it comes to regulators, whether it's the state or federal level, they do genuinely want to help you, but you do Mm -hmm. have to reach out to have those conversations and you have to be willing to listen. You have to be willing to listen to what they're saying and willing to, to follow their lead in such a way that they're still getting the information on for us it's the new innovation to understand how to place us you know what i love about what you're sharing jen is rather than hearing no this doesn't exist and getting disheartened you lean in and not only that you influence the process that actually helps you going forward the other thing if i'm hearing you correctly there are 50 states do you call each state yourself to kind of start this journey well we uh, First of all, we've got, I've got a phenomenal team. My, t- my team around me is absolutely amazing. So we've got folks on our team here at Proof that will make a call to set up the meeting. And then generally, once that meeting's set up, I do try to talk to each regulator. Wow. And we've got a strategic map of how we're going to roll mm-hmm. out. So we're yeah. hitting you know, the East Coast, West Coast. And then now we're starting to go into the, to the center of the co- country with you know Missouri, Wisconsin, uh, Illinois, and starting to make our way there as well. It's a, it's a slow process, but it's also a, it's a very rewarding process. Mm. Uh, and it's interesting because we're utilizing UPS to actually seed the market, these new states, with our e-commerce shipments. And then behind that, we come in with our, the retail opportunity once we get the licensing sorted out. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing, which is amazing to me, that you're kind of setting regulations in these states, state by state. And and keep in mind, you're disrupting these industries. So like, kudos to you. That's that's totally impressive, Jen. Thank you. Um, Thank you so much. Yeah, I, ooh, I love those stories. Um, Quint, it's great uh, that your team offered solutions outside of everyday assistance, um, you know, that a customer gets from core UPS solutions. I'm thinking our audience would love to have another case study of how a customer you were able to help grow and scale from a young startup to one has successfully grown into a much larger business. Tell us another way that customer solutions has helped a, another customer kind of uh, make make a, a significant 
a mark on its industry with the, the support of your team? Yeah, I can tell you about a situation where one of our consultants was working with the client and uncovered obviously a need and the need was shipping cheesecakes. They were shipping them regionally. Their current pack really wasn't working. Uh, it, uh, they're having problems with uh, the insulation and mm. plus the cost was was mm. you know, quite high. So uh, what we've done is we engaged with them to redesign the cooler. And when I was talking before about, you know, uh, having more of a dense uh, insulator, mm -hmm. uh, actually reduced the size of, of the package and it allowed uh, it to last over two days instead of one day. So in all, what we were able to do was uh, reduce the dimensional cost and we were able to uh, extend the time where it kept the cheesecake frozen. So it was able, the, you know, the client was able to uh, go to a, a wider range of clients and ship mm. it ground over that two-day network. You know, Quint, if I'm hearing you correctly, you one met a sustainability goal by making the package smaller. Two, yeah. by making the package smaller, you decrease shipping costs. And three, yeah. you achieved the, you know, the immediate goal, which is basically the insulation of the package. Yep. Did I hear that yeah. right? Like through through that, you know, through that recommendation, you hit some like major milestones and I'm assuming helped transform that that company. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, it, you know, I guess that's where we come in. We, we come in to understand the client's business. Uh, what are their goals, their challenges? And we bring experts together to, to solve those issues. So, that's yeah, great. It, it was a good result. And you know, now I think about it one more, like you said, they just expanded their, their client base. Now they can, they can ship in two days, you know, verse one and somebody's happy with some cheesecake on the other side. So, so that's always a good story, you know? Yes. So Jen, you talked about playing basketball. I love a female athlete. Um, and it's clear after talking with you that you are a hard worker and have an amazing work ethic and believe in a winning culture. And I believe you start your interviews with hiring. Why? Why would anyone want to do this for 14 to 16 hours a day? Please talk about, you know, how you build this culture, what it means to be on a winning team and why you start your interviews with that particular question. Well, that's a great question. And, and I, do, I do. That's one of the first questions I, I ask after the initial uh, interview process from our admin. Um, and it's so important because I, I love, I, am, I feel like the luckiest person in the world because I'm chasing my passion. I'm surrounded by a business partner and a team that supports my vision. They're all in on the opportunity. And then um, I, I have to talk about my children for a moment because I'm a single mom. So mm. as I looked at this opportunity, to launch this company and to launch this product, it, it was affecting more than just myself. It was affecting my kids who were teenagers at the time. Um, and, you know, I really needed them to back what I was gonna do because we were making a big move from Kentucky down to South Carolina to launch this company um, and really didn't have a huge network of support. Um, mm. So we were kind of coming in blind a bit but with that being said, being surrounded by the right people, having the support of my children has given me the opportunity to focus on growing this business the right way. And, um, and I think it's a great lesson to kids for, for, for mm -hmm. the, the entrepreneurs that are parents out there. You can be passionate about your business and, and your work life and also include your children in that, certainly from a mm -hmm. learning perspective that you know, you don't ever give up on your dreams. No doesn't mean no. No means just find another door in. Go in the side door, go in the back door, go in, or go in the window on the roof. But don't ever accept no for an answer when you're chasing your dreams and your passions. And that hard work beats talent every day. You know, mm. we, get, we, get a lot of, um, we get a lot of resumes from 
folks that are that have had you know 30 40 years in a in a certain industry that might apply to us and they have you know mbas and phd and all the all the things that you would probably look mm -hmm. for at a at a unilever um and i go back to that to that whole motto of 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 hard work beats talent it crushes talent any day mm. of the week because if you've got mm. the right attitude if a person meets our core values of you know teamwork dedication leadership and integrity and you're mm. willing to listen and learn then you're always going to have a place in our organization because mm. we are very inclusive we're very passionate about what we do and the other mm. thing i tell our folks is when you're you're helping us chase our dreams. We're all chasing this dream together. I also want those folks living their very best life in the moment. So how do we support one another as we chase our dreams? How do we do that in a way that we support one another and lift each other up every day? You know, I have to say to hear you're a single mom, I'm a divorced mom. And so I know what it's like to uh, balance yes. life and, and work and all those things. Talk a little bit about that actually how you've been able to, especially in the midst of COVID, right? Balance yeah. like this all intensive uh, responsibility of motherhood and then also chasing this dream of disrupting an industry where you don't have a roadmap where it's you. Talk about how you balance the two. So Ayana, that's a great question. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about this a little bit. I, I don't have any balance. I'm the first one to admit it. I have zero balance. What I do have is an absolutely phenomenal team that supports me, um, mm. which allows me. Now, what? I, but but with that being said, I have a lot of mom mom guilt. I think mom guilt affects us all, yeah. right? What, whether you're single, married, or not. So yeah. dealing with the mom guilt is a little bit tough sometimes. But in those moments where I might be feeling a little down on myself as a mother to my own kids. Mm -hmm. There's also this, this light at the end of the tunnel that even if, if this all went away tomorrow, if proof ice cream just went away tomorrow, never existed, I know the life lessons that my children have learned over the last eight years on how to interact with people, relationships are important, mm -hmm. work ethic is important, integrity, mm -hmm. all those things. I know that that's gonna propel them to a very bright future for themselves individually and for the families that obviously I hope that they lead one day. So mm -hmm. that's, that's where I, I kind of really it re resonates for me that, you know, this, this proof, it's a, it's a journey. It's not a destination. It's a journey and it's an opportunity for us to all learn together, celebrate together. And sometimes, you know, we got to cry together too. And this is my, my kids and I, and we just get through it day by day. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I just have to say that's inspiring. And I can see why you attract a certain individual into your company, right? Because there's a certain energy you want to feel day to day, people that are vested in, like you said, the journey with you, right? Because it's like you said, I, how many states are you distributed in right now? So right now we're one, two, three, four, five. We're five states, but we have another seven states that are pending. And then we're shipping e-com into, because those rules are totally different from retail rules at the state level, shipping into uh, 42 states, if I'm not mistaken. So, And that's amazing. And you just spoke about even expanding internationally, didn't you? Yeah, we just so we just sent our first shipment actually over to Taiwan. So we're, we're getting a lot of interest from the Asian market. And, and if I can talk for just a few more minutes, I'm sorry Please. to dominate the conversation. Yeah. But as we do this, it's, it's really interesting. So, you know, basically nobody, you know, three or four years ago, nobody knew this category existed. No, nobody knew who we were and, and rightfully mm -hmm. so. Um, mm -hmm. But as we continue to scale these opportunities and they see uh, us at the shelf at Walmart or they can buy us online, that's a big deal that you can get e-commerce alcohol ice cream into the market like we do because we're so heavily regulated, that's a big motivator. And it's bringing, you know, as we expand, it's bringing both large and small investors to the mm. table that are reaching out to us and saying, hey, this looks really, really cool. How can we participate? So it's, as we look at, you know, even some of the crowdfunding platforms mm -hmm. are reaching out to us. Yeah. 
So as we're looking at this opportunity to expand and bring on potential investors, it's just another opportunity to add to the journey. Because at the end of the day, my, my business partner and I have a, a phenomenal um, base of uh, investment from individual investors, what I would call angel investors that have been mm -hmm. amazing They're behind us. And we all know that they expect a financial ORI, mm -hmm. right? No question. Mm -hmm. With that being said, they're also going on this journey with us and enjoying the highs and sometimes the lows. But this journey of watching this product gain market share is just, it's, it, it doesn't come around very often when you get to work with a group or a product that's creating an entirely new market category. And it, it's just so much fun. I have to say, I realize we're talking to you at such an interesting point in your journey. There's, there's, I, I see the future and it is bright, Jen. So I'm so thrilled that you took the time to talk to us today, you know, and, and share your story with these SMVs because it sounds like you have international growth ahead of you. You have how to manage financial investors in front of you, you know, like really large injections of cash. You have yes. how to balance family and, and work, you know, um, and then I'm sure I'm not putting ideas in your head. I'm sure they're line extensions and, and getting back to the actual product too. Like yes. what's next, you know? Yes. So I, I will ask that question. What is next for proof? Like what, what, what do you think? What are you thinking about next? So we're, we're, um, we're, we're, we're doing R and D in some of the other alcohol spaces other than, you know, the bourbon rum moonshines. And we're doing some work with tequilas, mezcals. Mm. Um, we're also, mm. you know, there, I think there's an opportunity above and beyond where for bourbon balls, you know, for, mm. for opportunities outside of that might be more traditional for the holiday season, because right now the ice cream is actually a year round product. We mm -hmm. don't see the traditional drop off um, that you would see in the winter with a traditional ice cream because mm -hmm. folks are buying this for hostess gifts, things like that, because mm -hmm. of the alcohol piece of it. So I think there's additional extensions, certainly in the food category, where we're utilizing, you know, proprietary recipes to turn out um, products that still have the alcohol piece of it, but whatever we put out, it's going to be the ultimate indulgence because we believe mm. in, uh, we believe in the opportunity to indulge and go all in on one product like ours and, and ha have a fabulous time doing it. Yeah, no, I, I love that. I think after, I, I can't even say COVID's over, but after this year or the <laughs> last couple of years, I think we all need to indulge. So I think proof should be uh, on everyone's like Christmas lift. It's on mine now. <laughs> Um, nice. for everyone coming up this, this upcoming season. So one final question for the both of you, and I think we have some questions from the audience. Okay. Final advice to entrepreneurs. So Quinn, I'm going to start with you. What advice would you give an entrepreneur right now, considering customer solutions or even beyond? Well, I mean, as you're going through your journey, just like Jen was telling us about her journey, you know, if there's, there's gaps in your business, we have tools in the, in the toolbox, per se, to uh, help you. And, you know, we want to be your extension. You want to extend your team and create those relationships so we can grow with you. So I really appreciate Jen's story. I, I think she's uh, just a great story to listen to. And, um, you know, we're always here for you. And um, that's that's it. Awesome. Thanks, Thank Quinn. And Jen, final advice? Yeah, my, I think my, my last, I know I've talked way too much, but my last piece of advice is just really, um, if you're just starting out as an entrepreneur, um, find your passion. Mm. And, and, and find your passion in such a way that it can dominate your life in a manner that fulfills you mm. and that helps you grow as an individual, whether you're a parent or whether it's for your friend group, whatever it is, find your passion that feeds your soul and then go in, go all in on that. And, and the other thing I would say, I, you know, I think a lot of entrepreneurship and historically has been geared towards the younger generation. Mm. Um, I see that a, a lot. Um, 
you know, I'm an aging entrepreneur. I'm almost 50. And I didn't get into this until, eight, you know, eight years ago. So for those folks that are in my age bracket, um, man, find your passion, go all in and, and enjoy the ride and accept failure and then just learn and grow from it. Because I have many failures every day and I learn from those and I grow and try not to repeat those. So Jen, if I heard you correct, eight years, eight years in, that's it. Two or three of those years were COVID years. And here yes. you are like on the yes. brink, I mean, already successful, but on the brink of, I, I can already imagine where you're going. So that's that in of itself is an inspiration at almost 50, right? Like you're writing another yeah. chapter of your life that you didn't even imagine 10 years ago, right? No, or 20 that, no years you're ago. exactly, yeah, 20 years. No, you're exactly right. I, I never dreamed from the, the, the young girl that played basketball at the University of South Carolina that I would be sitting here talking to you guys today and it's it's the most humbling experience i, I can't even just I'll, I'll get tearful talking about it it's so humbling to be able to share the journey and um again just all credit to my team my team is freaking amazing surround yourself with people that are a heck of a lot smarter than you that love you or passionate about your project and go win together that's that's my advice yeah. And Jen, I got to say something. I think you have a large part to do with it. So no more. I'm talking too much. We're all here to listen to you. Your story is what I hope is inspiring this audience. So you are not talking too much. In fact, we could talk all day, which is part of the problem because I have to get to the Q&A, but I keep trying to talk to you. So let's see what some of these questions are. Um, so Tasha asked a question. Do most of these companies use dry ice for frozen goods while in transit? I don't know, Quint, if, if that's for you. Yeah, sure. Um, well, for the if something needs to stay frozen, you obviously want to go with the dry ice. Uh, if, if it's a refrigerated product, mainly what we've been seeing is the frozen gel packs out there that work the best. So that's a pretty and in, easy and fundamental way of thinking about it. So there's another question for you, Quint. What is the best way to figure out if you have enough packaging for breakable product without having to just send packages and hope they arrive safely? Does UPS has a way to test packaging in advance to, to give an informed recommendation? Yep. Uh, one of the services that we provide is uh, a testing solution where we would test your package and it would go through the elements of the small parcel network. So drops and then vibration, vibration with top load. And then based on how it went through the, the system or the test, we would provide recommendations based on how it performed. Great. Another question is, this one's for you, Jen. Uh, you know, usually when you work with insurance, it could be a lengthy claims process, which you know, insurance on the front end sounds good until you actually have to, you know, redeem it or file a claim. How has it been working with UPS Capital? Have they, have they has that helped? It's helped immensely. And um, quite frankly, I'm very surprised. The turnaround is, is, is fairly quick and we've not had any issues. Um, I think being prepared up front as a small, small business to have SOPs in place um, so that you're communicating with your customer to get, you know, pictures of the damaged product or picture, whatever it is that you're making a claim on. Um, and as long as you have those materials and place, you can submit that and get your claim back pretty fairly quickly. Actually, it's, it's been a pretty seamless process with UPS capital. That's great. And then, uh, Ashley asked, thoughts on using frozen water bottles? We received a refrigerated product with frozen water bottles, and it seemed to work better than gel packs. Thoughts there, Quint? Well, um, I mean, it, it depends how large the water bottles are. You don't, mm -hmm. you don't want it to weigh down your package. That's true. Uh, yeah, weigh it down. So, um, you know, uh, you have to justify the weight and the duration with, the type of refrigerant that you're using, so. Got it. And then Jen, how was your process with getting retail contracts? Did you use a platform such as Regime 
I'm not familiar with that. But how how did you go about getting that Walmart and some of those other top top customers? Yeah, so we, we did not use any of the platforms that are available. And I'm sure they're great, no discredit to that. But um, actually, we started at the hyper local and had an opportunity with a regional um, grocer called, um, I'm going to call them out because they're amazing. They're an amazing partner, Lowe's Foods. And yeah. we utilized uh, an opportunity for a test pilot with Lowe's Foods did a three month test pilot with some local stores here in Columbia, South Carolina, proved ourselves, proved our model, um, the recurring revenue model that we have. And after that three month test, they, they rolled us out to all of their locations in the Carolinas, which led to opportunities, you know, at, at Walmart, at Winn-Dixie, at Kroger, oh. and, and Total Wine and More and others. So really leveraging those local relationships to, to, to grow and expand, um, I've found that to be the, the best way to go. And, and that makes sense. So almost starting small, perfecting your model, and then right. you have kind of permission to then reach out to those other larger retailers at that point. That makes That's sense. Right. And then, uh, Jen, can you ship to all 50 states? I think you answered that one a little bit earlier. You're in the process. Does a hazardous sticker need to be on every box, or do all boxes need to be shipped ground, or do you ship air? So we do next day air, um, actually next day air by 10.30 a.m., but I think UPS is still in the COVID protocol, if I'm not mistaken, so it's end of day. Um, but we do not put hazard stickers on our products, on our shipping boxes, because we, we do blow five pounds of dry ice. Um, mm. And I don't know, Quint, you may be able to answer this. I don't know if that's how we're set up in the system as as a small but growing business or if it's a case-by-case case instance as it relates to dry ice. Yeah, it's a, it's a regulation that's five pounds um, in the air, uh, unlimited in the ground, so, yep. So the answer is no, we don't use the, the hazard ticket, but we stay below what the, the maximum it. is on the dry ice. Yep. Got it, and one last question it looks like we have here. How easy is it to calculate shipping to other states and does the customer pay that direct cost at time of purchase? This is for me? Yes, yes. You, oh, yeah, yes, perfect. Jim, um, you... So, so mm -hmm. yeah, no, um, so on, on our end, we can calculate the costs through WorldChip, um, mm -hmm. the platform that UPS provides. And, you know, this is, that's a great question because when people go to our platform, um, it's very ship, it's very expensive to ship any ice cream, any frozen product, because you have to have dry ice. There's just no getting around it. Um, so the, the weight of our product when it's shipped is very high. When it's shipped out of our facility or out of the UPS facility, but it's much lighter when it arrives to the customer because the dry ice dissipates. So I'm, I'm I don't think I'm answering the question correctly, but you can go on the UPS website. You can go on WorldShip and see what your costs are in advance. And then, of course, we list we list the the pricing on our on our website. Yeah, and then to your point, Jen, I think every company kind of does that a little differently how they uh, pass on shipping costs to customers or not. Yeah. So, yeah. listen, I have to thank you both for such a great discussion. Uh, Quinn, I always love hearing how UPS delivers, and I love hearing more about customer solutions, especially delivering upon our sustainability goals. Do know UPS has been hard at work on that long before that became a buzz term. And then, Jen, mm -hmm. stories inspiring. Um, I'm wishing you nothing but the best. I am a customer. So first, let me thank you both for joining um, today. It's, it's, it's been a great uh, webinar. Um, and let me follow up with some last minute, uh, the, you know, uh, items here. So first that $10 promo, I, I don't know about you all out there, but I think we all need to take advantage of it again. It's good through July 30th. So that's around the corner. Please take advantage of it. $10 off. Use the promo code UPS. Thank you, Jen, for offering that up to our customers. You got to tell us how many signed up. Absolutely. I will circle back. <laughs> 
<laughs> Great. And then, and then um, thank you all for spending time with us on this webinar series. I hope you really enjoyed the conversation we had today. Um, hope you're coming up with new ideas to get inspired. I hope you see a bit of your journey and Jen's journey. And more importantly, or not more importantly, but equally, I hope you see how UPS wants to really like support you in that. Whether that be through customer solutions, UPS capital, you name it, we're here to support you. And to help that, don't forget, we offer a 15 minute free consultation via um, our virtual consultation. Uh, and we'll happy to share and talk to you more about what your needs are. And we can put you in touch with customer solutions at that point if you ask for it, as well as any of our uh, other, other uh, functions here. So our next webinar um, in our series is gonna be August 11th. We will talk to where to go a UPS owned company and learn how their on-demand fulfillment solutions helped y -Bell Fitness offer faster, more affordable deliveries. And I don't know about you, come COVID, I think we're all trying to figure out how to have that, that gym at home. Um, so looking forward to that discussion. You don't wanna miss it. Again, Quint, Jen, thank you so much for your time today. I'm hoping the SMBs took something away. Um, have a great rest of your week. Jen, I'm a fan and I'm gonna be a customer. Thank you so much. Thank you, Quint. Thank you, Ian. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. All right, guys. Have a great evening. Thanks.